Hi YouTube, welcome to the third installment of the Test and Tune series I'm performing on the My Twin Dream FPV airplane. On one, of my, one of my previous videos, one of my viewers suggested that I could get better performance out of the vector stabilization element of the flight computer. And after discussing with him the procedure for modifying gains, I put a checklist together and went out to the desert to start dialing the gains in. A couple of notes before we get too far into the video. First, it was a very windy day. Uh, I think the winds probably were very steady around 17, 18 miles an hour with gusts probably up to about 25. So that made it a little bit challenging uh, to tune. But my theory is that if I can get it tuned and flying well in that type of wind on stable weather, it should fly really nice. Uh, the second thing I'll say is that I did not complete the, the tuning. I got through what I got through the basic gains, but I still have some work to do on the altitude hold and return to home gains. Now in just a minute I'll get into the, the procedure that you want to follow for setting the basic gains, but before I do, you're about to see a moment in the video where my basic gains combined with my altitude gain were set too high. So when I took off, what I normally do is I'll fly off goggles. There's, there I'm setting the gain at about 14 and I'll explain that in a minute. But I'll take off off goggles frequently and then I'll put it in loiter mode <clears throat> and then get myself set up to, uh, uh, with my goggles. But here's loiter mode and watch what happens on the screen you're going to see a little bit of oscillation and now it starts to get really crazy. See how it's hunting? We'll, we'll talk about how to fix that, but that is not a behavior you want to see when you're working out your gains on the vector. Okay, so to get started tuning basic gains, the first thing you want to do is go into your vector GUI on the overview, overview tab and look for the under controller gains and responsiveness there are three items at the top called pitch, roll, and yaw. You want to set those to 200% and then make sure you have the use knob equals yes. If you haven't set up a gain knob, you do not want to follow this procedure. You'll have to do it manually, but you're going to want to use that gain knob while you're flying. Uh, the next thing you'll do is set your gain knob to 12 and verify it on your OSD. Now the reason you do this is because the way the gain knob works with the basic gains is it's a multiplier factor on the value you put in those basic gains. So if you set the basic gains to 200%, uh, you set the gain knob to 12 because what that means is you'll get about 25% gain on all three axes. The same thing applies in the stock configuration where the default gains are set at 50 and the multiplier is also set at 50. And when you do that math, you also come up with 25%. So the reason we do this is because it gives you a lot of headroom to work up to uh, by setting the pitch, roll, and yaw at 200%. So set your gain knob to 12 and verify that on your OSD before you take off. And then the last thing, when you get ready to do this, and you'll see if you're watching the video, I didn't really understand this before I started working on this today but you only want to tune your basic gains in 2D mode, not 2D with hold, not with loiter, and not with return to home. Those three also incorporate another gain value or two depending on the mode. Uh, but 2D hold, for example, relies on the altitude hold gain, as does loiter and return to home. So don't tune in anything but 2D mode. That's, that's where you want to be when you start tuning. I actually figured that out while I was flying, so you'll see me monkeying around in 2DH mode, but I had a moment where I realized what was going on, and I took it out of 2DH mode and worked on the gains from there, and that worked out beautifully. Okay, I skipped ahead quite a bit in the video, about 10 minutes, and the reason for that is because I spent about 10 minutes trying different gain values with 2DH and not realizing why I was still getting rapid oscillations. And then it kind of dawned on me, well, if I'm in a, any mode that, that holds altitude, 
that the altitude gain was probably coming into play as well. So that's why I decided I'm going to go ahead and flip off out of 2D hold mode and go into just 2D mode. And you'll see right about there I get the gain probably pretty close to where it needs to be. I'll actually come down to about uh, 38 or so. And then when I flip off of 2D hold mode, then it looks like 2D starts flying really well. So I'll get quiet and I'll let you listen to the ground discussion as I made this realization. But I'm still getting some oscillation. But there's another value to check and that's the alt, the alt, hold, the alt hold value. I'm going to try and take this out of 2D hold and just put it in 2D mode and see how it does. Because that will that should get rid of the uh, alt hold hit, or the alt hold gain. So just putting it in 2D mode, that should just be pitch only. Okay, now we're getting to the part where I'm actually feeling really good about what I'm doing with these gains because I'm, I mentioned earlier in the video that the winds were pretty significant. If you look at my ground speed versus airspeed, you can see we're looking at about a 20, about a 20 mile an hour tailwind and look how locked in that 2D mode is. Uh, remember, this is not a heading hold or altitude hold. This is just a trimmed airplane in 2D stabilized mode and look at that thing. I mean, it's, it's like... Uh, flying a video game almost. It's almost like the wind was non-existent. Uh, all I'm doing here is making a turn, aileron and rudder only, and I'm not, I'm not massaging the elevator at all. Uh, that's the aircraft doing, uh, doing its job with the stabilizer to keep things level. So really quite happy with this outcome. And in a few moments, I'll show how we take the value that we got from the gain and put it into the computer to make it permanent so we can fly with the gain at 100 or lower depending on the flight mode we're in. Okay, I left the volume up there so you could hear the wind on the ground recorder. It was really blowing pretty hard. And while this, you can see some minor change in altitude in this flight mode. Remember, this is not a hold mode. This is just keeping the plane level. So all I needed was a couple of clicks of trim and I, I got this dialed right back in again. And then of course, when I went into the menu later on to copy my gain values in, I incorporated trims again and uh, subsequent flights in 2D mode were, were really amazing with the amount of wind that we had. So I definitely am, am happy with the outcome of tuning the basic gains. And next up, I'll have to do a little work when I go into the menus to reduce some of the porpoising I'm seeing in the altitude hold modes. But we'll get to that. Okay, now it's time to go into the computer and enter the value that I came up with for my gain knob that had me flying stable with no oscillation. So go into the menu and then go into the stabilizer settings and you'll see the three options there, pitch and elevator basic gain, roll aileron basic gain, and yaw rudder basic gain. In my case, I was mostly focused on pitch. That was the only axis that I really saw any kind of oscillation. And so dialing the gain knob to 34 got me the very stable flight that you saw earlier and no oscillation. So remember we started out at 200 on each one of these and a value of 34 on the gain knob yields an overall gain of 68. Now when I leave this menu you'll see that I'll turn the gain knob back up to 100 and what that means is that my gain percentage is 68. Now I can lower that value just by turning the gain knob down so if I'm flying a little faster and I need to settle down the uh, pitch or roll or yaw I can do that by just dialing down the uh, gain knob just a little bit. 
All right, and if you remember earlier in the video where I had that pretty severe porpoising in loiter mode, that was due to this vertical altitude gain. I had it set to 60. In this case, I lowered it to 45. And for good measure, I also lowered my return to home down to 45 as well. And you'll see when I come out of the menu and put it into loiter mode that it did, that value seems to have done a really good job. I still think there's more work to do. Again, as I mentioned, I'm not done tuning the altitude hold gain values yet. There's a little bit of porpoising there, but that could have been flight control. Uh, still a little bit of work to do there, but I can say that the loiter mode definitely worked better than it did in the endurance test flight number two, and it definitely worked better than it did today. So here I'll fly around a little bit in 2D hold mode just to see how everything is working. And uh, in a minute, I'm going to get quiet and let you listen. I, I really can't stress enough how much this wind was going today. So uh, just by nat the nature of the fact that there was so much wind and this thing was doing such a good job holding its pitch and, and roll, uh, I'm just really impressed with the way the tuning session went. Speed. I'm at 18, 18 ground speed and 38 airspeed, but it feels pretty good. I mean, it's, it seems to be pretty well mapped on. So. Yeah, it is really good. So I'm about to make a turn upwind, and this is another area that I really wanted to point out after the tuning session. While there is a little bit of movement there on the, on the artificial horizon indicator, if you watch the speeds, the ground speed and the airspeed swap places, uh, the ground speed right now is down to about 12 miles an hour and the airspeed is up to about 31. So turning into a very significant headwind in that, in that bank turn, the airplane still did a pretty good job holding altitude. There was another example of where I think there's a little bit more work to be done um, because I really don't like seeing it flop around. But the good news is it's not hunting. It's just making a correction. And as, as hard as that wind was going today, it's not completely surprising to see that to me. Uh, but again, I, I still think there's a little bit more work to be done, and, and I'll do that on the next flight. But here's a ground speed of 8 miles an hour and a hit, uh, air speed of 26 miles an hour and it's holding its altitude within just a couple of feet so it, it looks pretty pretty close okay now i'm about to go into loiter mode and you really want to look at the difference that i've got in loiter from this point we're starting at about 311 feet the difference in loiter uh, between where we started and where we wound up um, I think the airplane did a really nice, really nice job, or the stabilizer did a really nice job with those gain settings. Again, still a little fine tuning to do, but with the amount of wind we had and based on where we were when we started, I'm very pleased with this result. It looked like it did a really nice job holding that loiter circle. All right, that's pretty much a wrap for this video. So what we accomplished was we, we got a basic games setting pretty well established for the vector. So in 2D mode, it's flying really well. We did an initial setup for altitude and I did lower the return to home, but I didn't test it. I'll do that on a subsequent video. So keep an eye out on the YouTube channel and I'll get a video up on fine tuning the altitude and return to home games as soon as I can. Take care and thanks for watching and please do me a favor, hit subscribe and like if, if this is helpful to you.